I'm going to call the uh, 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 the special city council meeting of what is today, August 23rd, 2010, to order. If you could please rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you please call the roll. Councilmember Francisco? Here. Hotchkiss? House? Self? Here. White? Here. Williams? And Mayor Schneider? Here. I believe others are on their way. Um, are there any public comment for items not on the agenda? No, Madam Mayor. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to the Neighborhood Improvement Program update and site visits. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. I'm Browning Allen, the Transportation Manager, and I also am serving as the Chairperson of the Neighborhood Improvement Task Force uh, Committee. Uh, what we want to do today is just give you a quick overview of what the uh, NITF is, uh, how it got started, and some of the things that we have accomplished and what we're planning on doing uh, in this current fiscal year. But basically, what we have been doing is focusing on some of the neighborhoods that we have identified as being uh, deficient, whether it be infrastructure or services. We also found out when this, the task force was first started by the city administrator shortly after he came on board was, you know, we need to do a better job of coordinating our, our efforts and delivery of services. So the committee was put together to basically communicate better amongst our, the departments across departmental lines. We also encouraged the use of volunteers and get the residents and members of the community groups involved in what was going on in their neighborhoods. And then one of the other areas that we increased the amount of effort that the building and safety was doing in terms of um, co um, building code violation and zoning enforcement issues. Again, it's an interdepartmental task force. You know, we've identified our priority neighborhoods. We've identified what we consider to be just do it, things that we can just go out and do it with our current resources and staff without uh, having to do an allocation of additional funds in our, our budgets. Uh, we have been doing work in coordination with the railroad, Caltrans, um, what we did this past year, a year ago, is we put together a six-year capital improvement program for the uh, task force and identified potential funding sources for the uh, projects that have been identified. And we work closely with uh, community groups and neighborhood groups and the various advisory um, uh, groups that have been appointed by council. This is a slide that just shows you the makeup of the uh, task force. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but you can see different departments are represented on the uh, neighborhood improvement task force. In our priority neighborhoods that we identified, it's on the slide here. Back up one. Oh, we have that here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this slide here shows the neighborhoods that we have been focusing our efforts on, the um, east side, the lower east side, uh, east beach area, primarily um, Dwight Murphy field area and the Cabrillo ball field, the lower west side, uh, the west downtown as well as the west side. And all the neighborhoods that we've been focusing most of our attention on are also in the community development block grant census areas, so CDBG funds are eligible to be spent in these neighborhoods. So it's a funding source that we've been able to use to do improvements. I'm not going to go into the slide, but this is a list. You have this in your packet. This is a list of our capital projects that we've completed in the la over the last five years using community development block grant funds. And this slide here is showing uh, the projects that we've um, received funding for a total of $359,440 if us community development block grant uh, monies uh, for this current fiscal year. And we're, a couple of these sites we will be visiting today to show you with the current conditions and we'll talk about why we are looking at doing some improvements in those areas. <clears throat> the first project we got funded, $50,000, we're installing some additional uh, ADA compliant access ramps. Uh, on these streets. Um, this is, I think, our third or fourth time we've gotten block grant monies to do access rent. And this was identified by the Franklin Center Advisory Committee. It went before the Access Advisory Committee in terms of prioritizing um, locations for installations of uh, access ramps. The Cabrillo ball field, this will be one of our stops. I uh, don't know if we'll get out of the, the, uh, the bus to look at it, but we're going to be installing fencing around the restroom to deal with some issues that we're having there with some of the transients and some of the desirable, undesirable behavior that we're experiencing down there and some problems that it's creating in terms of maintaining the restrooms and making it safe for people who visit our park. Excellent. 
the Ortega Park restroom. We're going to be doing some um, interior re renovation of this restroom, um, bringing up to ADA compliant, as well as doing some exterior work on this restroom. We will be stopping at Ortega Park. The uh, Louise Lowry Davis Center, as well as the Westside um, Community Center, they are in need of some air conditioning units, so we got block grant money that will be installing the uh, equipment at those facilities. Just got next slide. Franklin Teen Center, um, Teen Center project. There's currently not a Teen Center at the Franklin Center, so to speak, so we've got uh, $25,000 block grant money that uh, is going to be used to remove some walls and make some modification at the Franklin Center to uh, provide another opportunity for the teenagers to, to get together after school. Excellent. What we did three years ago, we identified in various departments what we consider to be targeted um, projects or targeted uh, focus areas you know, to deal with some issues that we see on an ongoing basis. So the parks and creeks uh, divisions in the, in the uh, Parks and Recreation Department, you know, they've identified these locations where they have issues with um, whether it be drug dealing, you know, illegal camping, excessive alcohol use. Uh, whether it be uh, issues with the day labor, line, day labor line, but these are the areas where they go by on a regular basis, on a routine schedule, either to do cleanups or address problems that they see at these locations. Excellent. Um, I'm going to just blow, uh, go through these slides pretty quickly. This is an example of uh, some debris they uh, cleaned out of the creeks. Excellent. An in encampment were near um, Ninos, the railroad bridge. It's pretty elaborate uh, setup you see here. Excellent. Uh, under Mission um, Creek at Bass Street, uh, again, another homeless encampment. In the Public Works, we, in the Public Works Department, we also have targeted projects. You know, we have the Union Pacific Railroad, uh, railroad Right-of-Way Project, where annually we go in there and we clean up the railroad uh, right-of-way from the city limit to the city limits. It's 5.9 miles long, but we do both sides. So we're spending, you know, we're basically doing cleanup on, almost on 11 the 12 mile stretch of the free of the uh, railroad property the various foot bridges underpasses we we hit on a regular basis and then the graffiti removal program the graffiti removal program that the city started uh, roughly four or five years ago was an outcome from you know the neighborhood improvement task force as well as looking good Santa Barbara and I didn't find that there were some issues with graffiti we needed to do a better job of cleaning it we're instead of doing with part-time and, and volunteer workers let's put together a dedicated program so we came up with the graffiti removal program Next slide. Uh, this is it shows the uh the length of the um, railroad uh, corridor and what we do in terms of dealing with the railroad corridor we just get together with caltrans and union pacific on an annual basis we just this past year for example we did it for four to five weeks straight where james russell and a couple of crew members from the streets um, division worked with yeah, Union Pacific Railroad, and we hired California Conservation Corps members to clean up the railroad quarter. Instead of trying to do it every quarter, we just said, let's just take care of it once, just put all of our efforts, and they removed quite a bit of a material, and we'll have some photographs of their work efforts. Next slide. So these are just some slides that James took when he was out there uh, doing the work. Police Department was involved, um, the uh, folks from the CCC. This type of equipment we have out there is one of our streets uh, maintenance workers. You know, we pick up couch, you know, mattresses, bags of trash. It's gonna be um, this here. Here's one of the encampments we came across. Yes, and that is somebody that is sleeping on that old futon. You know, this looks like an old um, stove that was dumped in the uh, the right away. And here's an aftershock. Mattresses, tables, bicycles. Go ahead, couch in the background. So we, we see a variety of stuff that's dumped in the Union Pacific right away. Some of it is brought in there by transient, and others just drop, dumped there by people who don't need the stuff anymore, and they figure it's an easy way to get rid of it. And you think that we out there every year doing a major cleanup that we wouldn't see much stuff the following year, but it reappears the following year so there's an effort to continue our relationship we have with union pacific and just to remind council uh, up does reimburse us for our cost for hiring the the uh, ccc workers and it's the only agreement that i'm aware of in the nation where the uh, union pacific railroad is reimbursing a uh, municipality for 
doing work on there right away. I'm going to turn it over to Larry Cassidy. He's um, one of the supervisors in the Building and Safety Division. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. Um, as Brownie said, I'm Larry Cassidy. I'm the Building Inspection and Code Enforcement Supervisor uh, for Building and Safety. Uh, if you look at the first slide here, you can see the basic steps we go through uh, for a code enforcement case. Uh, again, there may be uh, other steps we take, but these are just the, the basic bullet points I'd like to hit on. Uh, obviously, sometimes a case will not go through all these steps uh, at any point whenever uh, the property owner abates the violations. The case is simply uh, closed out, and uh, we move on from there. Uh, next slide, please. Um, community development or ComDev code enforcement, the, uh, our portion of the neighborhood improvement program is focused quite a bit on the aesthetic value of private property in these neighborhoods that Browning has described. Um, it is a proactive code enforcement program, but with a sense of direction from the com different community groups, uh, fire department, police department, and the neighborhood improvement program members. Uh, we take recommendations from them and we go out and initiate enforcement action at these properties. Um, we try to focus our code enforcement in areas where there are uh, adopt-a-block projects, uh, new lighting, new sidewalks, curb, uh, ramps, etc., or other uh, CDBG projects taking place. Um, many rundown properties are rental units with tenants who are reluctant to file code enforcement cases and many times we, we come into these properties and realize that there's people living in the extreme substandard and, and often dangerous conditions. So uh, it is a definite plus to be part of this program. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, basically, the inspector, when he goes out, he's looking for fire and life safety issues, uh, uniform housing code violations, zoning violations. Um, in this particular case, uh, the upper left picture there, you can see that's what you see from the street. But once we gained access to the property uh, through cooperation with the, the property owners, as you could see, the, the, there were two structures on site, both of them extremely dangerous with numerous uh, plumbing, mechanical, and electrical violations that were uh, dangerous to the habitants. We, we, we actually, in this case, had to ask them to leave. It was just uh, too dangerous to allow them to stay there. Uh, there were holes in the floor. Uh, the doors were not operating properly. Uh, there was no heat, and uh, the electrical can, the electrical system was in such bad condition that uh, Edison was called in to uh, remove power to the site immediately. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, in in this case here, uh, from the the picture on the left, that's from the front. It doesn't look too bad. Um, Again, once we gained access to the property, we noticed that the, the back of the structure, it's hard to tell in the, the picture here, but it was wide open and it was an attractive nuisance to both kids in the area and other young people who were uh, congregating there. Uh, at this point, they have an active building permit to remodel and renovate the entire project. I was out there last week. There was a uh, some equipment on the front yard. They were getting ready to do some landscaping and this, this property was well on its way to being rehabilitated. Um, I would like to give uh, kudos to Rick Welch. He's our code enforcement inspector for building safety. Uh, he carries a caseload of 35 current cases, works very hard, uh, often an unsung hero to many of these property owners or the tenants in these properties. Um, that's all I've got for now. Uh, I may have some more comments while we're out in the field. Uh, looking at these properties. So if no further questions, I'll turn it back over to Brownie. One, one, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing I want to kind of point out that a lot of times we get complaints in about a, a condition like that, and they wonder how come the city hasn't taken care of it. You know, we complained about it two months ago, and nothing's changed. Well, we have to do what's called due process and give the uh, property owner the ability to take uh, make improvements and take up efforts to improve it. So it could take anywhere from a few months to up to a year or two years 
for a case to be completely closed out. And sometimes we have to get the city attorney's office involved, and sometimes they actually wind up taking the the property owner to court. You know, so it, it can be a long process, but you know, the building of safety uh, folks work closely with the attorney's office you know, to make sure we do it correctly. You know, and, and the people are given the opportunity to make whatever corrections are necessary. Next slide. I want to turn it over to Lorraine uh, Cruz Carpenter. She'll talk about our Adopt the Block program. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council. I'm Lorraine Cruz Carpenter, and I run the Looking Good Santa Barbara Adopt a Block program. And the program, many of you are actually members of the program, and um, we give away free supplies for those residents that are interested in helping us fight graffiti and litter in their neighborhoods. So we have an adopt a block kit we give as part of the program. It has graffiti remover. Um, some people are really interested in removing graffiti and fighting that, and that's kind of their pet peeve. Others just really hate litter, so it just depends um, what they're looking for. We help tailor a little cleanup program for them. We provide support to them. Maybe they're having neighborhood issues on their block, and it might extend a little bit farther than graffiti and litter pickup, but we help them um, figure out how who to contact in the city and work with them on those neighborhood issues. Um, so. That's the program we provide um, free supplies to them. We have, let's see, 160 adopted areas um, in the city, and it's growing more and more each day. I think uh, last month or the last couple months, we got about 30 different signups. So that's a lot for one um, month of time. Uh, the other thing we want to emphasize with our uh, volunteers is um, we push that we encourage them to be involved at any level. You know, some people have, you know, want to go out and clean up an hour a day. Some want to go out once a month. It doesn't matter. We encourage people to be involved at any level, and we find that the key to success because once we have people out there, they can start talking to others, and that's how we get others involved in our program. Um, also, some will take it to different levels of, of involvement. We have people that um, sign other people up. They've enlisted businesses. They get involved in our yearly cleanup. We have up to 500 people involved in those cleanups. So once we get people signed up for our initial adopt block program, we see them graduating to different levels of involvement in the community, and that's what we find as a really important key to working in these neighborhoods and getting them involved with with some of the things we're doing as part of the neighborhood improvement program and it complements the work we're doing as staff um, we're out there in the neighborhoods we're cleaning we're doing our work as part of the projects but we can't possibly be out there on every street we need those eyes and ears and so the program provides that um, opportunity to, for people to be part of the solution and help us on a long-term um, basis and um, so that's just about it with the program. It's a fairly simple program. Um, we ask people to get involved at any level, um, and we can help them to whatever extent. They might have larger problems, like I said, and we kind of walk them through that process. The neighbors in West Downtown, a lot of them um, started with the adopt -a block program, and as you know, many of you have worked with them. It kind of became a bigger project that we worked with them long term on, and we got them lighting and got them involved in the neighborhood improvement program. So um, you'll see a lot of the work that they're doing out there. Maybe you won't see it because they've already cleaned up the things that would no, you know, won't long, will no longer be there when you drive through. So that's the key to the program. Thank you. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, this map here shows every star on this map, um, the blue is people we've had signed up for a while, and the red is the ones that have just signed up in the last year. But this represents all the people that have signed up for a block and are cleaning up in their areas. And a lot of times I'll take this to community presentations and say, you know, let's, you know, look and see where you're at. Are there any neighbors around? And we try and link people together so they're working together in their neighborhood. Um, I have adopt -a block members that have taken it to their own community groups. And it's just a way to rally people, get them involved. They kind of look over and say, like, whoa, there's a lot on the Lower West Side. You know, like, are 
it doesn't have that many. So it's just kind of a tool for us to see like how much of the city we're covering. It also helps get people motivated to increase the numbers and the people that are involved in their neighborhoods. May I ask a question, Madam Mayor? Sure, go ahead, Mr. Hotchkiss. Hi, Ms. Carpenter, how are you? Hi. Good. If somebody sees, you know, uh, one of those huge TVs or an abandoned couch or whatever on their block, what should they do? Is there a number they call or what, what happens? They should actually call either their hauler, which is Allied or Marburg, or they can call the city streets line, which we dispatch it to them anyway. So either way, but they do get picked up um, and... We're working on that problem. It's, it's an so ongoing what's problem. What's the city street number so we can I'm getting tell that the for you. Yeah, we're. Right, gonna it's hold a, it it's a dispatch number, so, yeah. Oh, yes. And then um, some photos here. So the adoptive block, as I mentioned, a lot of times it, it's the starting point for many people. And they'll come to one of our cleanups, as you'll see here. We had 500 people at this cleanup on the Lower East Side, and we covered pretty much from Salinas down to Milpas and De La Guerra over to the freeway. So it was a large space. Um, we work with a lot of church groups, and they did help a, a number of private property owners aside from the work as we, we do as the city. But um, many times it's, it's a huge transformation, and this is what these pictures are, are sh illustrating is, is that cleanup and, and the change that is made through um, volunteers in the community and many adoptive block members. Council member. Francis uh, Hotchkiss, a member of the council, that number for streets is 564-5413. And that's a good number for everybody to remember. You know, if, they, if the residents see a couch or 5413. Um, if they see an abandoned couch, refrigerator, whatever on the side of the road, don't expect it's just going to suddenly disappear. Somebody needs to call it in because, um, you know, we just have a handful of, of staff, and they're not on every street every day. So we really rely on residents to come to let us know about things like that and not just abandoned you know property if they see a pothole uplifted sidewalk overgrown tree that's blocking a stop sign whatever you know call this number and it'd be referred to the appropriate person in the streets or parks to take care of and that's the city's dispatch numbers yes thank you these are the uh, locations that we're going to go uh, visit today um, the packet that we hand out of the PowerPoint presentation encourage you to bring it with you. We may be referring to that. Um, just going to quickly go through the Franklin Center slide. So this is one location that we're going to look at today, the Franklin Center. This just kind of show you the progress that was made through this construction project. Keep going. Okay. So if there's any questions, um, we we're happy to answer them. Scott Clacking from the police department is here, but he will not be going on the tour. So if you have any questions of police department, uh, now's your chance to ask him. Otherwise, we can answer questions you might have when we're on the bus. Okay. The bus will pick us up outside at the bus stop on Anna Kappa Street. It's waiting there for us now. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, Mr. House. Uh, just a quick question for the police department. Um, since There you are. I was wondering, why don't you come on up? And then I uh, just wanted to ask you a question about this because um, when we see uh, a neighborhood that's got these kinds of problems um, and then neighbors kind of rise to the occasion and take ownership of their neighborhood and we're here to support them in doing that, um, how does that affect um, law enforcement or crime in the neighborhood or does it, does it have an effect on that or is it, or is it just like status quo, it just stays the same? I think once neighbors take ownership of their, their neighborhood, they become our eyes and ears. And what we've been doing with neighborhood watch meetings is we're uh, creating ownership of it. And we're having them create almost like a, a little government of their own block, because we'll create a block captain, and that's the person responsible for the group. So to answer your question, there's a decrease in crime. They start I calling see. us for things that don't look normal. Um, people going through the recyclables, they're starting to call us for stuff like that. So the adopt a block might be the first step in, as, as Ms. Carpenter is talking about, and then perhaps they would um, become a neighborhood watch, which would be maybe a, a deeper level where they're really looking out for one another, and then it may go on from there to other things. Correct. We try to partnership up whenever I get a new neighborhood watch. I'll let her know, and then 
I'll sell it to them, and then she'll come in and do adopt a block for it, and it just really increases the property values too, which they're very happy about. <laughs> um, okay. The residents. So we partnership up with that stuff. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I think we're ready for a tour. We will adjourn from the tour. Thank you.